Hello everyone and welcome back for another video. So today I'm going to be showing how I made this Japanese inspired table. So here I'm just flattening some elm. This was originally two sections of elm or two boards of elm. Um, I glued these together off camera. So how I got the curvature was that I knocked off 25 millimeters from each end of the curve and that gives us the resulting curve um, For anyone that's interested I did actually make some plans for these so there is plans available There will be a link in the description or in my profile wherever you're watching this I'm actually just using my Ryobi saw here to cut the curve out there is a several different ways you could do this me personally i find this to be one of the quickest ways and the ryobi um, so handles this quite well because of the flexibility of the blade next up i'm just bringing the tabletop to its final sizes uh, which only leaves us with the two square edges here uh, to square up which you can see is doing now um, after that, obviously just um, cleaning those um, saw marks up with me plane. Yeah, you can see it's just squaring up the curved edges. You'll notice that I've actually got this clamp to the notch accessory. For anyone that's interested, there is a free ebook with plans in it for building the notch accessory and actually building the Roman workbench. Then I start cutting all the components to near size. Uh, obviously, this includes uh, the cross rails and the four legs. Yeah, I'm just creating the bevels. This is what gives it the Japanese appearance, or at least that's what I think anyway. Now I start cutting the joints, um, I'm not really going to go into this a great deal, I did make a separate video so I'm going to put a card up um, and if you want to check out how I've done this joint in detail you can do so. Next up, I'm actually marking out for the bridle joints. I have already cut the angles on the legs, top and bottom, and this was 70 degrees, although <laughs> I did actually make a mistake first time round, and I actually cut these at 80 degrees. Yeah, so you'll see later on the video, I did actually have to correct these, which wasn't fun. So, just as standard, marking out with a marking gauge, um, pencil line everything in, and I just start cutting the joints. Um, obviously, this is a little bit different to what people are probably used to, because obviously I'm cutting it on the Roman workbench, and I'm deciding to cut it in this sort of um, orientation. Um, once the cuts are made, I just start removing uh, the waste material. This is again bog standard, for me at least it is. I clean the shoulders up and that's me done with the male portion of the joint. So same again with the female section, I'm just marking everything out with pencil first, which I like to do. Um, this helps us uh, to see if I've actually made any mistakes with me marking before I make any knife rolls and such. Something to note here, when I do anything like this I will only cut one side of the joint first, create a bit of a slope or a bevel if you will and this allows us to put the components against the shoulder line and with a marking knife I'm able to get a nice tight um, knife roll. So this pretty much guarantees a nice snug joint 
or a nice fit if you like and that's exactly what you want. Next up I just start removing um, quite a lot of the material. I do most of this with the chisel. Um, I try to get as close as I can. Once I feel I'm as close as I can get, um, you know, without faffing about too much, I switch over to the router plane. The router plane just basically gets everything nice and level and it does it very quickly. So that's why I tend to swap over. Although if you haven't got one of these, you could do it with a chisel. It's just going to take you a little bit of uh, time to do it. Next up, I'm just making sure that my um, shoulder lines are nice and square, which on this particular case, they weren't. So now it's just a dry fit. Um, I did do this several times, obviously off camera. So you're all better off doing this, um, you know, several times and that really does help you get a nice tight fit. Other than trying to guess it, you know, uh, first time, it does sometimes happen, but you know, you're all better off checking repeatedly. Next up, um, I wax some glue on, get things clamped up. So I just clean the top of the bridle joint shot, just flushing them down basically. So for anyone that is interested and they do use a Roman workbench, I am actually just sandwiching um, the components together. You, you can't really say that on the video, but that's what's happening. Next up, I'm just making some tabletop um, holders, if you will, there. This is just to attach the tabletop to the framework. There's nothing fancy about these. This was just some um, off-cut that I had in my scrap bin. I was actually going to go out and buy some brass ones, but I decided against it because the original, what I had made, it was actually um, all wood, so, you know... This was to go and match the original for a customer, so I just kept it as is. So here I'm just faffing around, taking the corners off um, the tabletop attachers. Um, this is a little bit awkward, and that's why I like to keep um, components all together in one piece for as long as I can. Um, obviously, if it's longer, it is easier to hold uh, on the bench. So here I'm just recessing for the tabletop attachers, if you will. Um, this is pretty much the same process as how I've done the bridle joints, um, or the female portion of the bridle joints. Um, same again, I just creep up with the um, router plane. I find this to be a, a nice, quick, easy, reliable method. So here, just kind of while I had it um, at hand, I just use my bridle um, or my all, if you will, wh whichever you like to, to call them. Um, here you've just see is putting some basic candle wax um, onto the screw, and this just helps the screw go into the piece of oak just nice and easy. Yeah, I'm just positioning the framework on top of the tabletop, making sure everything's in line. And then I'm basically just marking out uh, where my screws are going to go. 
same again i use the barrel just while it's at hand um, get everything gear drilled um, and ready for the screws And that's it guys, uh, basically I just applied a finish, uh, photos to follow. Um, leave a comment, let us know what you uh, think. Uh, thanks for watching.